Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood puppy chaser and Jenko. <laughs> Today is not an animal control video day. It is actually a do-it-yourself dog drafting wagon day because Jenko and I are getting into drafting. I need him to pull his own weight around here, quite literally, <laughs> and help me out with the horse and stuff around the property. So that is what this is about. I'm hoping that this is going to be helpful for anyone who wants to build a wagon instead of buying one. Granted, I'm going to tell you up front, the cost pretty much matches that of if you're going to buy a wagon or build it yourself. Um, if you buy a wagon, I'm talking about buying a wagon from Harbor Freight, Lowe's, Target, Walmart, and converting it into a dog drafting wagon. If you do that, it's pretty much going to cost about the same. I prefer to build my own because, well, I, I do everything the hard way. <laughs> so really quick, let's run through this. This is basically when you're going to build the cart, um, the I guess the basket. You're building the basket first. That's your main stuff here. And it's a bunch of two by fours. Honestly, very simple. You're just going to screw it in there. I use two inch screws. That's, that's it. Two inch screws and boom half inch thick plywood. I got 10 inch wheels, 10 inch numerated tires from Harbor Freight. Everything else is from Lowe's. I had the wood already, but everything else is from Lowe's. So the PVC and everything, that's the hard part. And that's the part that I really want to focus on to help you guys out because that's the part that I struggled with. It's a ton of trial and error. As you can see, things are not really all that pretty. <laughs> Definitely trial and error, and I had to figure this out for myself. So if this is going to help somebody, it's going to help the people like me who had no idea what they were doing and had to kind of figure it out along the way. For the axles, it is 5 8 inch bolt. When you go to Lowe's, you're going to get one long length of bolt. You're going to cut that in half, and that's going to be your two axles that slide right into that half inch PVC. So 5 8 and you want to make sure that anything you're going to put on that bolt, so the nuts and the washers, make sure that fits before you leave the store. I'm telling you right now, it's very hard to find the correct pieces, so make sure everything fits on there before you walk out of that store, otherwise you're going to make a ton of trips to Lowe's. <laughs> and that's just going to run right through, and that runs right through the PVC, and for the PVC, with the T's and everything, you're going to need to measure out how long you want that to be. So however long you made your basket, the width is how long you need to figure out between the wheels, where you want the wheels to sit. Do you want them under the cart? Do you want them sort of off to the side? That's kind of up to you to figure out what length you want. I honestly can't remember what I settled on. I think it was six inches in the middle, maybe five. Um, because the T's are also going to be your length. Now keep in mind, when you put PVC together and it sits down in here, you're losing a little bit of your length. So when you are measuring, you need to take into account it is going to sit down in here a little bit. So I hope that's helpful, sort of, maybe. <laughs> and also keep in mind, when you cut that bolt, if you get lucky, you can screw from both ends of that bolt, but if you cut at any kind of an angle, your nuts are not going to be able to screw onto the side that you cut. So you're going to have to feed everything in a pattern. So you're going to need to put, you know, starting with the nut and then the tire, or if you want to use washers in between, nut, washer, tire, washer, T, length of PVC, T, washer, tire, washer, nut. So you're going to make sure you have to put all that stuff on in a pattern. And when you're making the wheels, I wanted to make them swivel because you need the wheels in the front to come around like that for your dog. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to turn the cart at all. I already went through this and it was a complete pain in the butt. And nobody really had any ideas of how to make this thing swivel. So pretty sure I came up with a plan and this is kind of my own original design here. I took leftover half inch plywood here and screwed it up into the base of the wagon. And I, I got this really cool Lazy Susan piece 
I can't remember what they called it, a plate. I'll definitely show you guys what that is. I took a picture of the packaging. Um, but I screwed the, the pieces of plywood on either side of that. And it works really, really well for what I need it for. That helps your, your thing. It works as a swivel, helps it turn. So that worked out pretty well. And then I just had to figure out, you know, how high to make this. Because obviously this height is not the same as your back wheels. Back wheels are super simple to do. And then you just attach it with your copper fasteners. It's the front wheels that are really the hardest part because you want to make them swivel. Once you figure that out, you can attach everything with your copper fasteners. And when you're doing the shafts, uh, that's why I use a T here, is so that the shafts can connect to the front ports of your tires so they can turn. The dog is going to be the one who's turning this. I want these to come out, so I use cotter pins. I went ahead and I drilled a hole in each of those pieces here and made sure that I got both this PVC and the connector. That way it's, it's not coming out. But I can take it out if I take the cotter pins out. Not really sure if that was helpful for you guys at all. Again, a lot of this is going to be specific to your dog how high, how long, that kind of thing. So this is specific to Janko with his length and his height. And you're gonna wanna make sure you have brakes. This keeps the cart from running into the dog. I keep calling it a cart, it's a wagon, my bad. <laughs> but when he's, when he's going along, trotting along, whatever, and he stops, you don't want this to keep going and run into him and hit his butt. So, <laughs> That's what these are for. They're going to keep it from going through the loops on his harness. And I just used duct tape for that. I just wrapped like a ton of duct tape around here and here just because I got fed up with this. But if you come up with a better way to do a brake, good on you. That's just what I came up with to keep that from running into him. And the other thing too is I got a little lazy and I just put straps on here, your tie straps, because <laughs> I didn't feel like going out and getting more bolts. You're going to want to do an eye hook bolt, one of the eye bolts here and here to hook your traces to. I just cheated a little bit and I used zip ties. So that's what, these are the traces and that's what actually pulls the cart. But if you really want to do it the right way, you're going to want to do the eye bolts. Okay, I will do my best to show you guys the pictures and stuff, run through the chain of events, how I built this thing. Again, you're going to see my original design in those pictures, and it was a complete failure. That's what this back end here was for, was for the shafts to be able to be the ones to turn instead of the wheels. The wheels were stationary, and it just did not work at all. So <laughs> you'll see where I messed up, and then I'll show you the other ways of how I figured out how to make the wheels swivel and all that.